good evening and welcome to Colbert. We're in South Bryan County for one of the bigger doubleheaders of the academic and athletic year here in 2019-2020. It's the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight game. Tonight is the opening game of our doubleheader as we see the Colbert Lady Leopards hosting the Caddo Lady Bruins. Tonight's broadcast of the Spotlight game is brought to you by Gallipot Pharmacy, Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, Six Arrows, First Baptist Church of Caddo, Hausner's and Sales and Trails Family History. The Colbert Lady Leopards in white, numerals in maroon. The home jerseys and the Caddo Lady Bruins, number 17 in Class 2A right now with an undefeated 13-0 record in the road black uniforms. Numbers and letters in gold as that one was sent to the house from long range. Addie Thomas with the first basket of the night, and it is for three. Our opening quarter here is brought to you by Gallipot Pharmacy. As the Lady Bruins step in on defense, it's a steal, and with a three-point advantage already, want to take it the other way. Emily Robinson wearing number 10. The freshman is averaging 22 points a game. Kicked out to Kylie Anderson. We'll get to the starting lineups now as going baseline shot under the basket, and it's no good. Caddo Lady Bruins starting lineup looks like this. We talked about number 10, Emily Robinson, a freshman. Number four, a junior, is Carly Robin Robinson, number 24, a sophomore, Addie Thomas. Number 33, a senior, Kenzie Dixon, and number 44, a junior, Kylie Anderson. The Lady Bruins are coached by Colby Johnson. And again, I mentioned 13-0 on the year and up by three right now. Lady Leopards in the home white uniforms, coached by Whitney Robinson. Starting lineup looks like this. A sophomore wearing number three, Sydney Bowers, and Bowers throws that one away. A junior number 11, Brooklyn Jones. Freshman number 12, Hadley Rhodes. Freshman number 15, Lorena Hokett. And a junior number 23, Victoria Simmons. And Lady Leopards come in 11 and five on the year. We were here for the semester finale back in mid-December as the Lady Leopards were able to come away with a big win over Coleman. No foul there. Nice job on defense. And the Lady Leopards have an opportunity now to cut into a deficit. And that one thrown away. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Lady Leopards. I'm Joey McWilliams, by the way. Glad you're joining us here on this Bryan County Patriots Spotlight game. My sometimes silent partner, Jayla Quinn, on camera tonight. Foul from behind as Thomas goes to the basket. The easy look, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors, including our sponsor for this first quarter, which is Gallipot Pharmacy, located at 213 East Main Street in Calera, suite number 100. Josiah Schomer and his crew will help take care of your needs, getting your medications filled there at Gallipot Pharmacy. Josiah, by the way, a Caddo graduate, played some sports as well. We may get a chance to hear from him a little bit later on. We'll find out. By the way, if you are getting your medication from this Colbert area, you're down here in Colbert and you don't want to travel too far north? Well, just up the road in Calera, you can stop right there and get your prescriptions filled. It's Gallipot Pharmacy. And if you're new, first-time customers who get their medications filled there at, at Gallipot Pharmacy get a free medication lockbox. So you can take care of, of all those little bottles, get them all put away safely. Driving to the basket quickly as Robinson. That won't fall. She had a good look as she split defenders. And it's 4-0. Here's the full court pressure once again. It's been effective so far. Won't work that time as Carly Robinson gets in a little bit too closely. And she'll pick up the foul. That is her first. First team foul against the Lady Bruins. Each team with one foul here in the early going. Once again, Gallipot Pharmacy. Josiah Schomer, and I have heard this, not from him, but I was actually in the pharmacy and heard someone say, best pharmacist ever. That is a quote. So you just have to go with that. Lady Leopards, by the way, 11-5 on the season. 
and coming in on a five-game winning streak. Quick shot from the corner. Hokett's shot is a little bit too long. Rebound by Robison. Looking ahead, finds Thomas. One dribble, that's just enough. Off the glass and in. And Thomas has six points. She's accounted for all six of the Caddo points, and I guess all of the points that have been accounted for in the whole game. The 2-2-1 look once again, and the Lady Leopards have been able to get through somewhat. That one's tough and still picked up, but thrown away as it was in and out of the hands of Coker. Mentioned the five-game winning streak for the Lady Leopards. Well, it was actually winning on December 12th, and, of course, the win over Coleman, 47-46. And that a one-point win, it felt like it was a, a little bit more of a differential than just the one point. A three-pointer made at the very end to make it a one-point contest. And Robinson goes in, falls away, and she'll get that one to fall. Finally, her first two points of the night for the freshman again, who is averaging 22 points per game on the season. She's had some looks already, and then midway through the first quarter, she gets her first made basket. There's the pressure again, and Robinson comes away with the steal. Numbers aren't there, but she'll take it to the house anyway. No, that one's stripped away, and it is Simmons taking it the other way. She's going to keep it herself, go all the way up. Shot won't fall. Put back. Will go for the Lady Leopards, and Bowers gets Colbert on the board for the first time tonight. It's 8-2. Then in January, Colbert with a win over Victory Life. Robison going up strong, and she'll go to the line to shoot two as Coker will pick up the foul. And then another win over Ashley, and then another win over Coleman. All those, by the way, in the Ashley tournament, and Colbert coming off a tournament championship there. Last loss for Colbert came against Tishomingo at Tishomingo, and there lies in what may or may not be an anomaly for the Colbert Lady Leopards with their record. Turnaround jumper is good for Dixon, and Colbert's going to call a timeout. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here and talk about the Lady Leopards for a moment. Again, eight and, excuse me, 11 and 5, and trailing by 8 right now here in this first quarter. And you look at the record, and you see the 11 wins. They're all there. Solid wins pretty much straight through. Getting the wins that you, you have to get if you're Colbert. If you're going to have a decent season, you need to pick up these wins because they're against a bunch of Class B schools. Now you get in, and as Colbert has taken on the 2A schools and the 3A schools, here's where the losses come in. Come in a win at Calera back in November 8th, and then at 2A Tushka, a loss. Following game at two, or against 2A Calera, a loss. Four-point loss there as the Lady Bulldogs avenged the earlier loss, Rock Creek, a two-point loss there, a close in all of them, but again against the 2A competition, and then against Hayworth, 2A Hayworth, and 3A Tishomingo. Uh, that accounts for the losses. So for the Lady Leopards, getting the wins you have to, but as the season wears down and we work our way into February, we're at the midpoint in January right now, you're going to be seeing those 2A teams in the playoffs. So you want to pick up a win here tonight if you can, hosting Caddo, and we'll talk about the Lady Bruins too as we go along. Full court pressure finally beaten. Hokett, quick jumper, that one no good, and the rebound goes to the Lady Bruins. Dixon looks ahead, up the court, off the glass, shots no good, and the rebound will stay with the Lady Bruins. Taking it strong to the basket, no good for Robison. Less than three minutes remain here in the first quarter. <laughs> Lady Bruins simply taking care of business now themselves. And you, know, you talk about getting the wins against the teams that they need to get the wins against. Well, they'll just go ahead and get wins against everyone. 13-0 and number seven in Class 2A. As that one's tipped. And chased down by Dixon, and she casually goes back court. Even though it was tipped, she had gotten control of it, and that's what the official is going to tell Coach Johnson. Hey, she had control, took that step past half court, and that may be as casual a backcourt violation as I believe I've seen. 
Dixon will come out anyway and pick up the D up top. Caddo and man-to-man defensive look right now. Also on the court for the Lady Bruins, Kennedy Morgan, a junior. That one knocked away, and I'll say his last touch by the Lady Leopards. Looked like a Lady Bruin got a hand on that one, but it will result as a turnover. Pretty good crowd here tonight. The, on the far side from our vantage here, on the south side of the gym, you see a good representation from the Bruin faithful making the trip from North Bryan County down to South Bryan County. Turnaround jumper, a little short, and the rebound will go to Simmons. And the pressure picks up a little bit, but it's man-to-man -man look all the way through. Simmons tries a three. That one rattles out. Offense not there tonight, at least in the first quarter, for the Lady Leopards, and Robinson takes it all the way down off the glass. No good. It's not going to fall. Rebound underneath and simply taken away by Carly Robinson. Lady Bruins reset now with an eight-point advantage. 2-3 zone look, passes inside. Morgan looked like she may have taken an extra step. She'll get it back off the deflection, up and in. Kennedy Morgan for two. There's the full court pressure that really kicks in after a made basket. And now coming out of the zone, we're going to stay in that zone look, coming out of the zone pressure, full court. Bounce pass, Lady Bruins step in. There's the steal. One minute remaining, 2-1-1, one, one. foul. This is going to send Cato to the line to shoot two. Less than a minute remaining now. First foul charge to Sue Sidney Bowers. And we'll see substitutions come in now for Caddo and for Colbert as well. A couple of starters coming back in for Caddo, but for Colbert, we see freshman Keegan Rowland stepping in for the first time tonight. Less than a minute remaining now here for the Lady Leopards to try to get something going. You think you have to get at least one basket here near turnover. Also, by the way, Brooklyn Jones. And stepping in for the first time tonight, number four, you see Denica Olguin. She had a good outing. That pass is a little high, and she just can't chase it down. The senior had a good outing when we were here before. Don't forget the second game of our doubleheader. Coming up just a little bit later in what could be a preview of the Bryan County Tournament Championship game next Saturday. Jumper from 18 feet is good. Emily Robinson with two more points. It's 15-2. There's the pressure once again. Lady Leopards. Again, I talk about casual play here and dribbling off the foot. There, Jones, let's go. Five seconds left. Time for Robinson off the glass. Won't fall. Rebound. And it will stay with the Lady Leopards. And we go to the end of the first quarter. Colbert up 15-2. Excuse me. Caddo up 15-2. Colbert trailing here at home. This is the Bryan County Patriot spotlight game.
Second quarter about to get underway here from Colbert, and the Lady Leopards are trailing by 13. Addie Thomas, a sophomore with six points tonight. She had the first six points, by the way, for the Lady Bruins, and she is leading the way with a game-high six. A violation will result in another turnover for Colbert, and this has been a little bit of an exercise in futility because the Lady Leopards are getting the ball past half court, not able to do anything with it. And the look inside, nice job by Robison to find Dixon. And Dixon with another two points. It's 17 to two, Cato on top, and another turnover. This time, Lauren Pinion, the freshman, wearing number two for the Lady Leopards with the double dribble. And there's not much that Coach Robinson can do right now. Thomas for three, a little strong. Rebound Dixon. She'll look back inside. No, thinks better of it. Top of the key. Robinson with the ball. Near steal. It stays on Caddo's end. Three-pointer too strong that time for Anderson. And it's going to go to Colbert. Can't contain the rebound. Now here coming in, not off the made basket. Now coming off the inbound, though. Lady Bruins back off the 2-2-1. There's the half court. Trying to get the trap. Can't find it. And knocked away by Anderson. will stay with Colbert. Inbound in front of the Caddo bench. Lady Bruins, as we mentioned, 13-0. And since the break, have come in with wins. Three wins to start 2020. Defeated Boswell 60-27. Then Colgate 67-32. And a good win earlier this week at Red Oak. Well, you go up and get a win at Red Oak, and that's always going to be a good win. 50-43 to 43 as the running jumper no good by Bowers. And the Lady Bruins look ahead, take it the other way. Robinson in. And a nice look ahead by Carly Robinson to Emily Robinson and uh, the freshman with two more points. Finally get it past half court, much to the home crowd's delight. Oh, game for three. No good. Dixon, rebound. Someone's ahead. This time it is Robinson again. Off the glass, the left-hander is good. And another timeout will be called by the Lady Leopards. We keep it right here on this Bryan County Patriots Spotlight game and tell you that tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Gallipot Pharmacy as well as Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, Six Arrows, First Baptist Church Caddo, Hausner's, and Sales and Trails Family History. Alliance Mortgage Group, our second quarter sponsor, and it's Brandon and Taryn Martin, and they are local folks from right here in Bryan County. Now, I'll ask you this question really quickly as the inbound comes in. Have you heard of an interest rate reduction loan? Because I hadn't. I didn't know what one of these, these were. It's an IRRL, but they had me at interest rate reduction. Because anytime you get that, that number to go down, well, that's not bad. If you've heard of an interest rate reduction loan or an FHA streamline, it's a loan that Brandon and Taryn Martin have available at Alliance Mortgage Group. This loan is targeting VA and FHA loans. And ultimately, as the borrower, and that's you, you get to keep the same loan program you're currently in, but the benefits of a lower re interest rate. And again, how cool is that? If your current rate is more than 4%, now's the time to give them a call. Pass ahead to Robinson. She slows down and drags a foot. Allows defenders to go by her, but she dragged the foot there, and we have a turnover. 21-2 as the Lady Bruins are on top. So it's Brandon and Taryn Martin. It's the Alliance Mortgage Group. They serve both Oklahoma and Texas, even though they're local folks from right here in Bryan County. And you can reach them 719 650 9406, another turnover for Colbert. I'm going to say this again, but since this is on YouTube, obviously you can go back and replay this and get this number. 719 650 9406. It's Alliance Mortgage Group or Taryn Martin. You can email her at tmartin at alliancemtggroup.net. tmartin at alliancemtggroup.net. I want to thank all of our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. And Again, second quarter here by Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin. Morgan can't get that one to fall, and, well, it's a rebound and another turnover for Colbert. 
Now the crowd here on this home side is going to say, well, Hokett had some contact that caused her to, you know, stumble just a little bit. When it ultimately comes down to is another turnover for the Lady Leopards, and that's why there are just two points on the board now for Colbert. Heading into the Bryan County Tournament Week, driving to the basket, it is good. Caddo now up 23-2. to two. And Heading to Bryan County Tournament Week, that gets underway on Monday. And, by the way, on the Bryan County Patriots website, our home site here for the Patriots, you can see the tournament schedule for the week ahead. It's all mapped out there for you, and just if you need to search for it, search it up. Bryan County Tournament Schedule, 2020 Bryan County Tournament Schedule. We'll be updating scores over the course of the week as well. Hulkett, the one-handed shot, kind of threw that one up and over Anderson. Last touch, though, by Anderson. It will stay with the Lady Leopards. Easy inbound, and hoke it for three, well off the mark, and Lady Bruins will simply let that one go out of bounds. Nearing the midpoint here in the second quarter, and this is an early point in this quarter where you almost wish for the half to get here if you're a Lady Leopards fan. Just try to do something as the pass inside and the shot made. It's going to give Emily Robinson double digits on the night. She has 10. It's 25-2. to two. There's the pressure broken. Numbers, hook it off the glass, no good. Under the basket, trying to get the board. Can't do it as Rhodes. It's going to stay on Colbert's end as it's just chased down. Fisher there, and hook it for three. Now this one falls. Lorena hook it for the first basket there in the second quarter for the Lady Leopards. It's 25-5, to five. and the scoring drought is over. So with the Lady Leopards, you don't want to start another one right here. Lady Bruins content to pass the ball around outside the arc. Long range shot is good. Three-pointer for the Caddo Lady Bruins tonight. And we have a number shift, so we are uh, actually going to check that. Poke it for three again. That one a little too strong. Put back. No good. Here come the Lady Bruins. Robison, coast to coast, count it. Carly Robison with her first two of the night. Thirty to five, and this one getting away from Colbert in the first half. Long pass ahead again. Looked like Robinson may have taken an extra step. Doesn't matter. Every time the defense steps in for a steal, Emily Robinson's going to take off the other direction. She has 12 tonight, and it is now a 27-point advantage. That one tipped, nearly stolen. And that is a stifling zone as the Lady Bruins come away with another steal. Morgan ahead of the pack now as Robinson's on the left side, and She'll receive the pass. Take it baseline. Tries to split defenders. Can't do it. Rebound underneath, and we have a tie ball. Now that's a nice job as Carly Robinson had that, and a good job by Roland to step in and tie things up. And so Coach Robinson has seen enough from this group of five. She will send an entirely new unit in. It's a line shift. And everyone's seen time on the court already that is out there right now. Ten players have suited up tonight for the Lady Leopards, and all ten have seen some action. So currently on the court for the Lady Leopards, Brooklyn Jones, as well as Lauren Pinion, Kinsey Coker, Victoria Simmons, and Danica Olguin. Simmons. Has it taken away. Numbers now for Caddo. Passes ahead a little bit too strong, and I say numbers for Caddo. Coker did a great job to get down and really disrupt things, and that one's going to wind up staying on the Caddo end. Wasn't much Simmons could do to control that. Just really get in the way. Minute 41 remaining here in the second quarter. 
which again is brought to you by Alliance Morgan Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin. Long-range shot for Morgan, or excuse me, for Thomas. I think she's surprised Morgan got the board. High pass, and Cattle will reset. Long range again. That one's a little bit too long. It's going to stay on the Cattle in. It does. Pinion tries to come in there and take that one away, and I think at this point you just get a little bit more aggressive. Robinson to the basket. No good. Olgeen comes away with the board. Will fight for it. Try to dribble out, and the defense will back off. Looking at a man-to-man, -man, but it's going to be past half court for Cato. You think for Colbert right now, anything to make something work. Pinion, long two, no good. And in the middle of the lane, off the glass and in. Jones with her first basket tonight. It's back to a 25-point game, and just like that on the other end, Cato gets a shot off. It's not going to fall. Pinion doesn't have numbers and has to just get away, get it out of her hands as she was going to the court. Less than a minute remaining here in a first half that's gone by pretty quickly and gone all the way for Cato. Thomas knocks that one away. Olgeen's pass sent flying. So we see a substitution here as Morgan goes out and Carly Robinson comes back in. Open as Jones thinks about it. That may be as open a look as we've seen all night. Thomas comes away as Pinion tries to keep it on her into the court. Thomas off the glass, no good. The putback is there, and another two points for Cato. It is 34-7. Time will tick away here. Will the Lady Leopards get one more shot? Not sure they know how much time is remaining here. Stolen from half court. little short, but it has not been short for Cato throughout the first half. 34-7 is our score. This Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game is presented tonight by Gallipot Pharmacy, Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, Six Arrows, First Baptist Church of Caddo, Hausner's, and Sales and Trails Family History. Back in a moment here. The Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game on its home, MidwestSports.net.
Second half just about to get underway here from Colbert as the Lady Burns are just owning this one so far. 34-7 is our halftime score. The Bryant County Patriots Spotlight Game is brought to you tonight by Gallipot Pharmacy, by Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, by Six Arrows, First Baptist Church of Caddo, Hausner's, and Sales and Trails Family History. It has just pretty much been all Caddo. And by the way, all you Harley Mullins fans out there, well, she has eight points tonight, but she has a different number than what uh, we had on the roster that was given to us. So she's wearing number two tonight, and she has eight points, including seven in the second quarter. So she's wearing number two tonight, which I'm sure if you're a Harley Mullins fan that you knew that already. Sorry about that, Harley. We'll make sure we get that right next time. Passes inside and a foul. And count the basket for Simmons. She'll go to the line with another opportunity, the and one opportunity. And Victoria Simmons gets on the board here in the third quarter. First foul charged to the Lady Bruins now, and that one's going to be levied against Kenzie Dixon. Pass went in. Got past that Keto defense. Free throw, no good. And the rebound taken by the Lady Bruins. It is 34-9 now. Our third quarter is brought to you by Six Arrows in Caddo. Look inside to Dixon, and Dixon has two. And a really quick timeout now as Colt Johnson will talk this one over with his team. Dixon now with six points tonight. She's averaging 15 on the season. How about our sponsor for the third quarter? Six Arrows Women's Clothing. Six Arrows Designs in Caddo. Stop by and see Brandy Green. And that is at 107 Buffalo Street in Caddo. Now, I think about Main Street all the time, but I know it's called Buffalo, so all you Caddo folks out here, I've been in Bryan County for a long, long time. I'll still call it Main Street occasionally, but it's Buffalo Street. It's also Highway 22. You want to get really technical on that. And just before it turns into 22 properly and shoots you off over to Boca Cheetah, that is where you will find Six Arrows Designs Women's Clothing. 107 Buffalo Street. See Brandy Green. By the way, Rock Creek Class of 2005. She's from Broke Cheetah. She's a Bruin now, though. Definitely a Bryan County person. You need to stop by. They have a little bit of everything in there. And if you haven't seen her store, uh, she's had this for about 10 or 11 months now. Closing in on a year there, Six Arrows has been there on the south side of Buffalo Street there near the corner. You need to stop by and check it out. Six Arrows Designs Women's Clothing. Lady Bruins still up by 27 points now. Defense starting to kick in a little bit. I think Coach Johnson wanted to talk this over with his team and not let them get lackadaisical coming out of the intermission. Emily Robinson is well on her way to her season average at the halftime break. She had 12 points. She averages 22 leading the way. That's a game high, by the way. Mullins with eight points, six points apiece for Addie Thomas and Kenzie Dixon. Dixon got her sixth point here in the third quarter. Is driving to the basket is Hokett. Shots too strong. Rebound. There is Robinson passing ahead. Thomas slows down enough to draw the foul. She'll count the basket and she'll go to the line for the and one opportunity. Addie Thomas now for two. And that has been indicative of the way the Lady Bruins have been playing this season and tonight especially. Get the rebound, look ahead, and find someone going down the court. The and one opportunity works for Thomas. She now has nine tonight. Lady Bruins up by 30. Jones drives baseline, kicks out for Hokett. That one's a little short. Put back off the glass and in, count it. Hadley Rhodes for two. A nice job by the freshman to just stay in the lane, find that board. A good idea of where it was going to come down. Skip pass to Robinson. Or Robinson, excuse me. Dixon's in the lane, has to step back out. Here is Robinson. Dixon. Jumper is good. Nice move down low. Got the defender up and stepped back for that one. Kenzie Dixon has two more points here. The senior. Bounce fast trying to find Simmons. Rhodes is there. Kicks outside. Bowers. 
Long range jumper, no good. Long pass ahead. The baseball pass to Robinson off the glass. Count it. Dixon to Robinson. Another assist. And give Emily Robinson two more points. Her first here in the second half, she has 14. Man-to-man -man defense has been working tonight for the Lady Bruins. Of course, that's going to be a foul. And, again, talking about this in the second quarter coming into the break as Brooklyn Jones will go to the line to shoot too. The Lady Leopards really, uh, well, the first thing that the Lady Leopards are going to have to do is, is control the ball and not have the, the unforced errors and all the turnovers that Colbert had in the first half. The second thing is you're going to have to be more aggressive, and that's exactly what we saw from Jones then, driving to the basket, drawing the contact, and she goes to the line. She misses the first. I believe that's the first free throw attempted tonight. No, second free throw attempted tonight. And now making that one, that is the first free throw made. Morgan looks inside, Dixon, and goes right into two white jerseys. And there to tie that one up is Brooklyn Jones. It's going to stay with the Lady Bruins, though. Nice, cool, wet mid-January night. Three-pointer little shorts, and the Lady Leopards get the board. Bryan County Tournament again starts on Monday. And the host sites this year will be Bennington and Rock Creek and, of course, Southeastern on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Dixon ahead of the pack, can't make it. Morgan's not there for the board. Rebound, Pinion. So Rock Creek and Bennington will have games on Monday and Tuesday nights. And then the consolation semifinals on Thursday, the ninth place game, and winner's bracket semifinals on Friday. And then the fifth, third place, fifth place, third place, and championship games on Saturday. Midpoint here in the third quarter. Pinion, left elbow, not there. And another rebound taken by Caddo. And Robinson loses control of it. It's going to stay on the Caddo end until she throws it right back away. Thomas got a hand up, got a hand in again, and eventually taken by Caddo. Looking ahead, Robinson. Emily off the glass, no good. Put back, Thomas is there. Addie Thomas for two. 45 to 12. It is all Caddo. Mullins will check back in here in just a moment, as will Anderson for the Lady Bruins. Caddo defeated Fort Townsend just before the Christmas break, 81-17. I don't think we're going to see those numbers tonight, but Lady Bruins are threatening to get there. Another steal, another look ahead. Long range two for Emily. That one's no good. Put back by Morgan. Will stick. <laughs> How about that? Now who's going to jump up and knock that one down? Oh, that's cheating. That's cheating. I'll, now, I say that, and, and I think at this point after just having had a birthday on Saturday. We won't say how old it is, but it's not 50 yet. I think I'd be fortunate to be able to grab the net like that. So, But back in the day, yeah, I was still fortunate to just be able to grab the net like that. First free throw no good for Morgan, and we have the line shift again here for the Lady Leopards. First unit will get a breather here, 2.53 remaining in the third quarter. Neither team particularly strong from the free throw line tonight. And Kennedy Morgan misses both. Caddo three for seven from the free throw line tonight. Culver two for, or excuse me, one for three. And the Lady Bruins benefit from that one going off Colbert. So another opportunity to push this lead. 
cutter through the lane is Dixon. It goes off Olguin, and Dixon will get it back for a moment. And then Bowers on the court tried to get up. She traveled. Have to get rid of it with both knees there on the court like that. She didn't do it. Anderson on the inbound. And looking for an alley. Oop. What? Wow. Well, Dixon didn't get up as high as what Robinson may have thought she was going to, at least with that pass. Here's your full court pressure. The 2-2-1 look again. And the Lady Leopards have had opportunities to beat this press tonight. When you pass it back like that, you're going to find it tougher and tougher and, and tougher even to get past the timeline. And Coach Whitney Robinson says, no, that's not the way it's going to happen. She takes a timeout. We'll keep it right here. Our third quarter sponsor is Six Arrows in Caddo. Six Arrows Designs, Women's Clothing, 107 Buffalo Street in Caddo. Go by and see Brandy Green right there. All of our sponsors tonight. I want to say thank you to all of them. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of the Ryan County Patriots Spotlight Game, please email me, joey at bryancountypatriot.com. Joey at bryancountypatriot.com. We've had some good stories online on the Bryan County Patriot as of late. Interesting from Oklahoma City as a couple of bills introduced by Senator David Bullard. Bullard, read about those on the Bryan County Patriots. And some news from the Choctaw Nation, including the state superintendent of schools showing her gratitude to not only the Choctaw Nation, but other tribes for their work in investing in education. That and more in some sports news. Also have a nice new fitness fitness column coming to you from Workout Anytime. So check it out. It's bryancountypatriot.com. That is our online look. Colbert brings it back in. And a high pass. Olguin will chase it down. Defense gets back quickly. And stepping in is Dixon. Slings it back into Anderson. Nice save by Kinsey Dixon. She'll get it back. Stutter step. Passes outside. Mullins to the corner. Looks for Dixon. Turn around. Jumper. Good. Rattles in. Dixon with the steal, and she comes away with two points when it's all said and done. Kenzie Dixon now has ten. Skip pass. Stolen by Dixon. She'll take it the other way. Gets ahead of the pack. Off the glass. Count it. Dixon has eight points here in the third quarter, and it is a 37-point advantage. We looked ahead, and if you look at the, the records between these two teams, and by the way, the boys' game coming up tonight, again, looks good on paper. It's a top-20 matchup between the Colbert boys, number 16 in Class 2A, and Caddo boys, number 12 in 2A. As Olguin tries one for three, that one no good. Morgan tips it to Anderson, and she'll look ahead. Robinson stops, jumper. A little too strong, and Mullins will chase it down. But you look on paper, I mean, 13-0 for the Lady Bruins. Okay, expect them to come in strong. But Lady Leopards 11-5, and, and with the five-game winning streak, just has not been Colbert's game tonight. Less than a minute remaining here in the third quarter. And so we'll see some new faces checking back in. Hokit coming back in for Colbert. Keegan Rowland bringing the ball up the court. No pressure now. Less than a minute remaining third quarter. Thomas steps in the passing lane, gets the steal. Is she ahead of Rowland? Enough, but can't make the basket. A little bit of contact, but we're going to let that one go. 20 seconds left in the third. Hokit off the glass. No good. Rebound Mullins. Enough time for one more look. And she'll go strong to the basket, hits the underside of the rim, Olguin for the rebound, and she'll just slow it down and allow time to run out here in the third. Eight minutes remain in this one. The number 17 in team in Class 2A is on top by 37. Back in a moment on the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game here on MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel.
Fourth quarter about to get underway here from Colbert. It's the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. It's presented tonight by Calipot Pharmacy, Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, Six Arrows, Hausner's, Sales and Trails, Family History, and our sponsor for the fourth quarter, the First Baptist Church of Caddo. Pastors Jeff and Robin Self. Long range jumper, no good. And Caddo again for the board. This one's chased down, though. Jones gets it back, tied up in the lane. And it will go Caddo's direction as the Lady Leopards inbound started the fourth quarter. You look at, at the uh, First Baptist Church of Caddo, 203 South Henderson in Caddo. It's where the church bell still rings. And it really does actually still ring on Sunday mornings. Pastor Jeff Self making sure that gets done. Different people get an opportunity to ring the bell. And I'm sure folks right around the church can attest to that on Sunday mornings as well. I like that, though. I think that's cool. Three-pointer no good for Thomas. Rebound Lady Leopards. And the folks at the First Baptist Church probably liking the results through three quarters here as the Lady Bruins are all over the Lady Leopards here in this Bryan County matchup tonight. The Friday before the county tournament. First Baptist Church in Caddo. Sunday school starts at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. Worship is at 10.45. A Sunday evening Bible service as well. A Bible study at 5 p.m. Then Wednesday night, the midweek service with dinner at 6 p.m. And Bible study groups for children, preteens, students, and prayer group and Bible study for adults all at 6.30. And it ends at 7.30. Nursery and transportation to and from all services. Lady Leopards get two on the board. And this one's tied up. It'll go back the other direction. So Colbert with an opportunity for back-to-back -back points. By the way, if you need transportation to the Caddo First Baptist Church, call for transportation. It's 580-367-2235. 580-367-2235. It's the Caddo First Baptist Church where the church bell still rings. 35-point advantage for the folks from Caddo. By the way, I do know Pastor Jeff Self. Uh, he knows a, a thing or two about high school basketball. was official for a number of years. And Pinion gets two. Lauren Pinion with two. And so back-to-back -back baskets for the Lady Leopards. And, yeah, that is one thing. I mean, Pastor Jeff Self, he can talk about basketball and talk about Jesus. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Dixon, one dribble and pulls back. And you have a couple of players in Morgan down low, as well as Kelly Burns posting up. Kelly Burns, a freshman, wearing number 14 in the contest for the Lady Bruins now on the bounce pass to Morgan's little low taken by Pinion. Two on one look and her pass ahead will go off of Robinson. Emily Robinson getting down playing defense. Pinion with one dribble, left elbow, too strong, and Simmons will get the board. Bounce pass, tried to find Simmons as a cutter. Anderson steals it ahead to Robinson. Here we go again. And the lefty off the glass for two. Emily Robinson with a game high 16 points. And we have a whistle away from the basket. This is going to allow substitutions to come in now. Thirty-five point advantage for Cato. And the Lady Bruins, by the way, will be the top seed in the tournament as Thomas just reaches in and knocks that away. Both teams headed to the Bryan County Tournament next week, one of the sanctioned weeks of tournaments in the state of Oklahoma. And Jones for three, a little strong. 
Lady Leopards after that, however, will play at Caney on January 28th. And in the month of January, hosting Silo. I said, I'm sorry, I said that the uh, Lady Bruins were the number one seed. I believe they're number two, excuse me. Sorry, all you Lady Rebel fans, forgive me. Well, and, and in, by the way, in, in what is coming up as our second game tonight, maybe the biggest matchup in Bryan County boys basketball this season, Robinson off the glass, no good. The putback by Josie Burns is, though. And Josie with two tonight. Her first two. She becomes the seventh Lady Bruin to put points on the board. Cato after the Bryan County tournament and possibly will meet Silo in that tournament, and both could be going strong as Mullins gets two more points now, and she has ten on the night. Kenna will meet Silo at Silo on February 7th. That could be the biggest non-tournament matchup in Bryan County. Of course, the playoffs won't be far after that. Turnaround jumper, no good for Coker, but she'll go to the line. And 2.50 remaining in this one. It's been all Cato, and it's been a pretty quick game as well. By the way, I do want to make mention of one other thing, too. Prior to tonight's contest, a moment of silence held for Bryan County Deputy Jared Taylor, who died earlier this week, responding to a 911 call. A Colbert graduate, and he was recognized here just a little bit earlier. One free throw made for Coker. And three for Morgan, not there. Coker tips it around, finally taken back. And the foul after Robinson came away with the board. <laughs> Pinion goes out, Sidney Bowers checks back in. Pass inbound, too strong. Rebound. Burns was there, and she lost it out. So Calvert will bring it back in. Lady Leopards have gotten 17 points, and, and that was the season low for Caddo holding opponents to just 17. Lady Leopards want to make a basket anyway. Hoke it's there. That one won't fall. You don't want to have that number, your number against an opponent to be the lowest one against that opponent for a season. Mullins checks back in. Robinson checks out. Likely for the final time tonight. And we see an entire second unit now in the game for Caddo. By the way, freshman Peyton Lowry also in the contest for the Lady Bruins. A little more than a minute and a half remaining. Caddo will move to 14-0 on the season and head into the tournament undefeated off the glass, and Mullins is there for two more. Officials will take a timeout to allow a substitution as Victoria Simmons checks back in. Harley Mullins with 12 tonight. Four players for the Lady Bruins in double figures, led by Emily Robinson. You can find the second game of this doubleheader on this YouTube channel as well, MidwestSports.net YouTube channel, the home of the Bryan County Patriots spotlight game. Baseline jumper, a little strong. 
And the pass is ahead to Mullins. She can't control it. It's going to go off her foot and out of bounds. The flagship show for this MidwestSports.net YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Saturday. We were in Durant at Southeastern last week. We'll be in studio this Saturday. That's tomorrow. And then next weekend, be sure and tune in for that one. On January 25th from the campus of Oklahoma City University. Big one. Doubleheader between Mid-America Christian and Oklahoma City University. Three again attempted by Hokett and again goes awry. Rebound. Lowry looks ahead. Bounces a little pinball between two or three players there. And finally taken by Hokett. And she'll be a little slow getting up. I think we'll see Olkeen come in for her with 30 seconds left. At no point in time you want to see a player injured, but especially not with this much time left in, in a game like this with a, a point differential as it is. And it's just been a rough night all the way around for the Lady Leopards. And Caddo, again, will move to 14-0. Colbert will fall to 11-6 on the year as both teams head to the Bryan County Tournament. Mullins three no good. Rebound underneath. Taken by Bowers. And uh, I don't think she's going to try to get one off. She may. Just past half court. Off the front of the rim. No good. Caddo 57 and Colbert 17. Wrap things up here from Colbert. Gymnasium as Emily Robinson led the way with 16 points. Harley Mullins had 12. Kenzie Dixon with 12. Addie Thomas had 11. And for the Colbert Lady Leopards, no player with more than three points tonight, led by Brooklyn Jones and Lorena Hokett tonight. Lady Bruins moved 14-0 on the season. Lady Leopards fall to 11-6. And I want to say thanks to our sponsors once again. Very, very privileged to have these sponsors tonight. Thanks to Sales and Trails Family History, to Two Hausners, to the First Baptist Church of Caddo, to Six Arrows Designs, Alliance Mortgage Group, Brandon and Taryn Martin, and Gallipot Pharmacy. Thank you for sponsoring these games. Thank you for watching this game tonight. For Jayla Quinn, I am Joey McWilliams. This has been the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. And the second part of our doubleheader is coming up. <laughs>